The first improvement in the R3 release is in the color mixing. Uh, basically, the color mixing and all the, the effects, including the pulse and the ramp in and ramp out, have been greatly improved. And what this allows is for uh, no color separation during the normal use. Basically, you set up a configuration per LED, and from then on, the mixing will be perfect. Now, if you still want some separation as a neat effect, you can do that by still setting the min color values to something high for uh, certain dyes. So that gives you that separation effect if you want it, thus being a feature not inherent in the mixing. Uh, but from now on, you only set min color if you want that separation to happen on purpose. Otherwise, for normal use, you don't need to set min color anymore. Uh, so let me go over a font and show you just watch as the ramp in and ramp out come, how smooth and consistent all the colors are going through all the effects. Even with the flicker, there's no separation. The second improvement in the R2 release is the addition of a boot sound. This allows you to have an independent sound play when the saber starts up compared to when you're cycling through the fonts. So if you turn the boot on, the first time you pull a saber it plays boot.wave from the root. And then if you push the aux button the first time, it'll play your font.1 font wave and reload the first font. And then from then on out, it works like the old behavior. And of course, if you set boot equals false in the master or equals to zero, then you'll have the same original behavior where it loads right into font one, playing font not one wave, and then hitting the aux button goes right to font two. So here's the boot sound on my Nigon Master Saber. And now you can see I'll go to the first font. It's in the first font now if I turn it on, and if I push the aux again, tells me the first font. The third improvement of Igniter R3 is the new feature, Blade Shade. Now, if you guys are familiar with Clash Shade and Blast Shade, then you'll probably be pretty uh, assured of what Blade Shade is. And basically, it's the same thing as those two. When you start up the saber, like when you push the main button to uh, activate it and turn it into its running mode, uh, every time it will actually choose the blade color from the color but within the range of blade shade. So if you set your blade shade to like 40, 20 to 40, which is recommended, then you'll get like a slight variances of the color. You can set it to green and then you might get like a little bit more bluish green, a little darker green every time you get a little bit different color. Um, whereas of course, as with the other blade shades, if you go ahead and set that value really high, 100, 200, and so on, you'll get kind of random colors every time you turn on your saber. And it doesn't require you to uh, switch fonts, it's just every time you push the button to activate the saber. So here I'll go through uh, this first font that has a low blade shade, I think it's around 40 or so, and then I'll go to a font that has a blade shade of 200, I believe. So you can see, that was a little more whitish. This is a little more pinkish. Just kind of similar. See, that became more bluish. It's more whitish and pinkish. So you get the idea, it's a pretty similar color every time. 
Now I'll show you a font that has a more extreme blade shade of around 100. So there you can see you get a lot more variations on the color. The final improvement in the Igniter R3 release is a brand new feature called Saber FX. Now Saber FX came from a long time back when a couple of folks were on the forums were making some fonts and uh, pre-mixing in some vocals and some extra stuff at kind of like the end of some blaster box and such. Um, and while this did make a cool font, it's kind of required you to do that for every font you wanted to manually mix it. Uh, so hence, I decided to come up with Saber FX, and this will, in the firmware, uh, do the mixing. So how it works is you have a bank of files, FX01, FX02, through, through FX0, you know, and N up to 99. And when you turn on the Saber FX mode, uh, those sounds will kind of randomly be played depending on after you do some actions, or you can set it to also play them if it's your Saber's running but not doing anything. Um, so you can control both of those uh, percentages independently. Uh, this allows you to kind of have, like, if you want to set it up so you do a bunch of actions and then it, it's likely to play a sound, or if you're just it's sitting there, will it play a sound too? So without further ado, I will show you a couple uh, Saber effects on my Sabers. So this is has about 75% uh, for both effects for the for the running and effects. So let's do the effect. First. And so every time, about 75% of the time, after you do this, it makes an effect. Also, it makes an effect as you see, it's about 75% of the time humming there, where that's defined by the reading. And this font by the this effects package by the way is my droid package. It's supposed to be like if you're battling a bunch of droids. Now, let me turn on the main reason I did this feature for my Luke ROTJ. So there you can see you can really add a whole new layer with the Saber FX mode. Uh, and one more last thing about the Saber FX mode is being a mode that you can just turn on or off, uh, A, you can turn it on or off to as many as fonts as you want, just like Saber Cinema. And B is it's actually independent of Saber Cinema, thus you can actually turn it on, you can turn Saber Cinema on, or you can turn both on. So that can really add a whole new experience with music and the effects and your lightsaber sounds.